This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock, joined by Rennie Rutledge. He's the chairman and CEO of First Security Bank Corp. Always good to see you. Good to see it you, It does Rob. not happen often enough that I get you in a studio to uh, get to talk, so. Not ever, as a matter of fact, I would say, yes. But the best part of why you are here today is that you are being inducted into the Arkansas Business Hall of Fame, a tremendous honor, and I just want to say congratulations to you, and I'm very proud for you. So. Thank you, Roby. It is a, it's a big honor, and uh, I'm proud to, to be getting inducted. You have uh, certainly earned it. We're going to talk a little bit about your banking history here, but just tell me what kind of when you found out. Um, I would imagine somebody probably somewhat surprised you with the nomination because I know how you are, and I know that you wouldn't have written your own application there, but when you found out about getting uh, uh, the achievement, what, was the, what kind of went through your head? Well, first of all, I've been uh, involved with this uh, Arkansas Business Hall of Fame since it started back in the uh, late 90s. I was on the advisory board for uh, the Walton College when Doyle Williams came up with the idea of uh, having a uh, Hall of Fame and then our group put it together. So, and I've been involved with it ever since. So that makes it really special for me. <clears throat> and uh, therefore I knew a lot of the processes and a lot of what they were doing, <laughs> except I didn't know that I was, I was involved, but uh, um, the, my family uh, had a reason for me to come down and, and meet uh, with, with, actually with Matt Wall Waller, the mm -hmm. Dean of School of Business. He set up a meeting with me in Little Rock. And so we were gonna have lunch uh, at Cash Restaurant. So we show up there and he takes me upstairs and there's all of my family. And, uh, daughter-in-law, sons, and so forth, my uh -huh. wife, and they surprised me with a lunch and, and telling me at that event. Well, it's a good thing that there wasn't like a TV camera there. We would have had a Jimmy Johnson <laughs> NFL Hall of Fame shedding a tear moment there, though. But that sounds special. That sounds awesome. So It, it was special. It sure was. I want to go uh, talk a little bit about your history and your background in banking. You actually start. you were an industrial engineer. Is that what you got your degree in? I got a degree, degree in industrial engineering yeah. from the University of Arkansas. How did you sure Find your way from industrial engineering to banking? It was a happenstance, to tell you the truth, and uh, some of it may be a little embarrassing. I, my wife had a little something to do with it, who wasn't my wife at the time, but I uh, got my degree in industrial engineering, and from, from riding around and talking and visiting with my dad, I figured out that there were business concepts, business thoughts, uh, that I didn't have a clue about. So I, I knew that I, I wanted to learn more from a business perspective, but it so happened my girlfriend at the time uh, had another year of college. And knowing my fraternity brothers and other friends <laughs> at school, I did not want to leave her <laughs> with them for a year while I went and worked. So I decided to stay and get an MBA. All right. Well, that's good. Um, so you eventually, after you got the MBA, you went to work. You, you talked to a banker in Smackover, who gave, which is where you're from, right? Uh, who gave you some advice about, you ought to look into banking. You're going to be dealing with bankers for the rest of your life. Well, so. When I decided to... to uh, get the MBA, my uh, thought process was when I got done with that, I was still going to get an engineering, a technically oriented type job. And so I started interviewing for those type jobs the second semester for the MBA and uh, had some offers. I just couldn't really get excited about it, what I wanted to do. So a good family friend, Max Mitchum with the bank and smack over where I'm from, uh, asked my dad to have me come by. So I went by and visited with him and his advice was, since you don't know what you want to do, which is pretty bad when you're as old as I was, <laughs> that you might try banking. If you're going to stay in Arkansas and be in any kind of business, you're more than likely going to be dealing with a bank. So if you try it and it's not what you want to do, what you learn will apply to business later in life. So that's Sound like sound advice and uh, took him up on it. Yeah, so you did do some initial work in banking. You went to work for Worthen Bank at one point in time and then got the opportunity, I guess, to in 
invest in a small bank in Searcy, Arkansas? Forty-six million in assets, I think, is what it was. Yes, I, w I went to work in '73 uh, uh, at Worthen Bank and, and worked there for three years. Got married at, during the time to Ann, and we going back that extra year paid some dividends for you. It did. It? <laughs> it worked. It worked out. That's exactly right. So uh, we we really enjoyed Little Rock, and we're having a great time. Young couple, no kids. Uh, both of us from a small town, her from Newport, me from Smackover. Uh, we knew we wanted to try a small town. And if we didn't do it fairly soon, we probably would never leave Little Rock because we enjoyed it so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an opportunity to go to a bank in Springdale and uh, took that opportunity. We went up there and spent only nine months. I, I, I didn't mean for it to be such a short period, but an opportunity in, in Searcy, Arkansas came up, a $46 million bank, and we were able to make that transaction happen and, and went to, to Searcy in September of 1977. The rest, they say, is history. How large is First Security today in assets? Our company today fi finished the year, as a matter of fact, um, at just over $6 billion which is the first time that we, we crossed that That uh, six that billion mark. dollar threshold there, that's awesome. Um, so let's talk about what you have seen change in that uh, time period. What do you think was the blueprint for all of the growth that you had? I mean, to take a bank from Searcy, Arkansas, 46 million in assets to six billion today, um, that happens methodically and cons with consistency time over time over time. I mean, you're replicating a formula that works. What's the, what's the magic formula there? Roby, you've always heard the term, the right place at the right time, and being lucky. The time period with which I entered banking and these opportunities came to me really happened to be at the right time in Arkansas and with the banking laws at that time. It's really a long story. I don't know if you want to go into all of it, but whenever we acquired First Security in 1977, you could not have multi-bank holding companies in the state of Arkansas. So the uh, big banks really did not have a chance to buy First Security. It had to pretty much be an individual or a group of individuals. So that's number one. Today, that would not necessarily be the case. The, the big banks are the ones doing the acquiring. So that allowed us to have that opportunity. Uh, we were there for several years, uh, and the laws in, in Arkansas uh, changed to where you could have multi-bank holding companies. And I happened to be involved in, in with several other folks getting that, that changed in Arkansas. And then also, the, bank, the branching laws in Arkansas were restrictive to the, the city with it in which your uh, bank was chartered, or in that county if you were in a, uh, a, a city that did not have a bank chartered in that town, yeah. okay? Pretty restrictive. So the banking laws changed in 19, I believe, I'm gonna say around 1995, uh, to where they allowed contig contiguous uh, county branching. Well, they first allowed branching in the county, then contiguous counties, and then in 1998, they allowed uh, branching statewide. So those two things together, which were not in place when we acquired uh, First Security, and if they had been, we probably wouldn't have been allowed to buy it. Yeah. But that allowed a systematic expansion of either an acquisition or once the bran branching laws changed, of branching into other areas of the state. So that just happened to be during that time frame when there was change in Arkansas. Yeah, right place, right time, but it took a lot of skill to do that as well, as you well know. So I know you're uh, eating some humble pie there when you're uh, thinking, talking about that. So your three sons, um, John, Adam, and Nathan, have all kind of followed in your footsteps in banking and, uh, and, uh, and finance and are with your company today. I know that there's a great sense of pride for you in that. You and I have sat down with the three boys and done a uh, profile piece. It's been about five years now, but it's still a great read and I think very insightful. Um, I don't think you're worried about the future of First Security once you decide to take a step back, are you? I am not. <laughs> I am not worried about the future of First Security. Uh, I am worried about when they're gonna kick me out. <laughs> 
<laughs> but other than that, so far there's Surely no evidence. Surely you're still a of bigger that. shareholder than the three there, of them. There's so. no evidence of that at this point. I think I've got my thumb in the good spot, but. Yeah. Uh, I'm certainly not worried about the future uh, of First Security from that perspective. Were you surprised that the three of them, I, I know from the interview we did a few years ago, it wasn't their first choice to come into banking. All three of them had some different interests and eventually maybe towards late college, uh, early post-college, they thought, I'll give this a shot. I, I don't know about it being their first choice. Uh, I stayed out of any discussions with them on what they wanted to do uh, as far as uh, uh, the future uh, because I wanted it to be what they wanted to do. Yep. And uh, they ended up all, uh, their first choice was, I think, to be in banking with us. Uh, I was surprised at that. They, they all went to the University of Arkansas. They got a good degree um, from the Walton College I thought they could get a job, but ended up I had to hire them. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there was there was, uh, and, and, and Nathan ended up getting a law degree, and John got an MBA, and, and uh, uh, Adam had some thoughts with some buddies to go spend a year doing something different, but that didn't work out, so uh, he ended up at the bank also. So. Well, you threw him into Northwest Arkansas, the gauntlet up there, so with uh, doing a great job there. You bet. Let's talk about what the, kind of what you see in terms of the present and the potential future for uh, just the banking industry in general right now. We are, we are in a long-term low interest rate environment, uh, low unemployment. The economy does seem to be humming along pretty good. We've got some decent uh, GDP numbers, not super fantastic, but certainly nothing to sneeze uh, at. And regula regulations seem to have eased in the Trump administration. Do you feel good about where banking is right now, or is there are still some barriers that you think need to uh, change? There are some barriers that need to change. Uh, regulations are tough. Uh, I, I understand that the Trump administration has uh, loosened regulations, but I really can't say that I've seen that in the banking business. So nothing has changed there from a regulatory perspective that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I hope the future of banking is good. I will tell you that uh, for the 45 years or so that I've been in banking, there has been a continual change, uh, including six months after we acquired First Security, there was a major change. and then. You, know, you go through the oil crisis, you go through the savings and loan crisis, um, the, the deal in uh, the recession basically in, in 2008 and 9 uh, was the worst uh, thing that I had seen during my 45 years of banking. I was literally scared to death in, in uh, the fall of 2008. But coming out of all that, the last decade, and, and we've looked back on that decade since the end of the year. and has probably been the best decade that we've had. So uh, there are going to continue to be a lot of opportunities and uh, for improvements and for doing things different and better and learning new ways in the banking business going forward. We don't know what those are going to be. And uh, we just hope that we can be ahead of it and maintain a, a good, sound financial institution in Arkansas. I'm the CEO of a media company, so I'm quite familiar with not knowing what the future is going to look like uh, in terms of maybe 10 years down the road. I got a pretty good snapshot of five years down the road, but uh, there's no telling what's Your, lurking. Yours probably is changing quicker than ours And is. it has changed a lot. So, um, so let's talk about financial technology, fintech. Uh, Arkansas is becoming, becoming kind of a hotbed of uh, some of these startups that are coming through here. Just maybe talk to me more generally about how technology as a whole has been transforming the banking business. And again, it sounds like the foot's not coming off the gas pedal on that. How does a bank continue to decide when is the time to jump into this new technology versus let's wait and see if there's enough critical mass for this? It's called, would you want to be on the bleeding edge or the leading edge? And <laughs> we try to stay on the leading edge, but uh, sometimes we might end up on the bleeding edge without uh, an intent to do so. But it, it's just going to continue to change. It is amazing. I, I can't even describe uh, on this program what banking was like 
when I started. I mean, basically, there were no cell phones. There were no PCs. Uh, we had a small computer in the, uh, in the bank that, that we ran our commercial loan system on. And we posted our general ledger by hand every day in a big book. <laughs> We've still got the books. And, uh, you know, we filed checks. Our, our notes, when you made a payment, we had a card and we wrote down that the payment was made and the date it was made. And we basically gone to that, from that, to where there's basically no paper in the bank. Everything's done electronically. All the checks used to would get checks in, would send them to Little Rock on a courier at night, it'd get on an airplane and fly to the Fed to be processed and gone throughout the country. The physical check, now the physical check never goes anywhere. Yeah. It's killed at the first bank of deposit. <laughs> that is, if you get the check, because you may be getting a picture of it from your phone. So the, the, the change from all of that process is just a tremendous and really a benefit, I think, to the customer as well as to the bank. Because when you can handle all this electronically, the, the cash letter, we call it, that we used to get from the Fed with all of our customers' checks coming to the bank that got to us, they were sent to us early in the morning. We ran them through the computer and they were the paper checks. Now we get transmitted over the internet a, a digital file of those checks and we never see them and we never have to touch them. So, uh, you know, I mean, it's just the, the change, now that change has allowed us to be so much more efficient mm -hmm. in, uh, in the operation of the bank. And I think at the same time provide a better customer experience because customers these days, they go use their debit card and then they go home and get on our internet banking and they want to see that transaction posted right then. Yeah. And so they have more information and we like them to be interested in seeing that. So uh, I think it's hopefully better for the customer and it certainly has allowed us to be much more efficient. Yeah. He is a business hall of famer. He is Rennie Rutledge, chairman and CEO of First Security Bank Corp. Always good to be with you. Thank, Thank you so you, much Robbie. and congratulations again. Very proud for you. Appreciate it very much. All right. Thank you. That's all for today's edition of Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. We will see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners.